The Florida Gators had two players drafted in the first round of last night's MLB draft. We're talking about that here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Monday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with whole nine sports, Giants country, NFL 33. And as you can tell, I still dealing with this a little bit. Um, whatever it is we're we're just we're down horrendously but anyway last night was the mlb draft released the first two rounds of the mlb draft brandon sprout did get drafted in the second round by the new york mets my new york mets so woo however the focus today is on wyatt langford and hurston waldrop also there's going to be a second episode of Locked On Gators coming out today at about noonish um for those who are here for football mainly but I'm here for the Gators and the Gators include Wyatt Langford fourth overall pick to the Texas Rangers last night and that's too low for me I understand four is a tremendous spot however over this past weekend we'll say like Friday rumors started swirling like oh Wyatt Langford could be the first overall pick in the draft because Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens were going to command more money than Wyatt Langford. And so basically the Pirates, who are known for being very cheap, were going to draft Wyatt and not having to pay uh, Paul Skeens or Dylan Cruz, both from LSU. Okay, that's what happened. Regardless of that, we knew that if Wyatt Langford did not go first overall he was not going second overall the plan for lsu or the plan for the nationals were always go lsu if paul skeens goes first go dylan cruz if dylan cruz goes first go paul skeens if why langford went first i would assume that they would have gone for paul skeens but then i thought that wyatt would go to detroit at three then they took Max Clark instead from high school. And then at four, Wyatt Langford got drafted by the Texas Rangers. I still think he should have gone three at the absolute worst. Like, I understand Paul Skeens. Best player in the draft. Okay, best player in the draft, best pitcher in the draft. I thought that Dylan Cruz and Wyatt Langford were pretty neck and neck for best position players in the draft. I thought Wyatt Langford was a little bit better, mostly because I think he's got a higher ceiling as well as a higher floor right now. And I understand that, you know, the the logic behind will Wyatt Langford go first overall was he's going to be valued under slot. And then you get to pick three, and Wyatt Langford doesn't go third overall, because the Tigers wanted Max Clark because he would be cheaper than Wyatt Langford. Like, so I understand the thought process of, you know, going for a player under slot value so that you get to save some money. However, and I need this to be heard because this goes for pretty much all sports, especially professional, we'll say. There is a reason that bad franchises stay bad okay it's until they make a drastic change or if you get a lucky ad somewhere in there you know like like football detroit lions cleveland browns they were bad for so long because that's how they were run like like that that's what they did even if you had good coaches the management was bad, and then that's what 
I feel is going on with the Pirates. I'm stunned that they took Paul Skeens, even though, again, he's far and away the best player in the draft. I don't think that's even a question. Um, But I thought they were going to try to save money. And it's like, well, Wyatt Langford, I love him. You should have taken Paul Skeens, which they did. Um, but but the, the slot value thing is what's killing me because that's why bad teams stay bad. Because they're like, oh, well, let's let's make sure that we save some money here. That's stupid. Okay. I do think that Wyatt Langford is going to be in the minors for probably two years before he comes up. And that's not a knock on him at all. That's, I think, relatively common to do. I think one thing that, or maybe we'll say two things that Wyatt Langford does really well that I think helps him maybe speeding up that process. One, I think that he's pretty mechanically sound as a hitter. Like like very little wasted motion, doesn't take these huge strides, none of that. Two, and I've said this before as it's my favorite thing about him, his patience at the plate. Like... Wyatt Langford, in real life, at the plate, is the kind of patience that I dream to have in MLB The Show. Okay? Play that game a lot. I swing a lot. Um, So, yeah, I mean, taking walks and not striking out often was an important part. I forget the numbers exactly. I think he walked 56 times in 2023. Struck out just 44. So he led the Florida Gators in drawing walks. And he was also the second. uh, He struck out the second fewest times amongst everyday starters. So Wyatt Langford's patience at the plate is incredible. No doubt about it. I think that's that's a great step for him. Because I feel like a lot of players, they kind of get to be more aggressive when they're playing against, we'll say lesser competition, but Wyatt Langford didn't get that, uh, let's say, privilege <laughs> of playing in the SEC, playing for Coach Sully. Um, but Wyatt, I think, is someone who's going to find success relatively early on. I'm very excited. I'm going to see how quickly I can add him in my Dynasty Baseball League uh, as well. I want him. Simple as that. But we are about to head to Hurston Waldrop, which is one that I have, I think, stronger feelings on here. But first, today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Let me tell you this. I wore my Bird Dogs yesterday because, I, 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 yes, I went mini-golfing yesterday. I understand. I sound horrible. I feel okay. But I went, money, I went mini-golfing yesterday. I shot a 58. In 18 holes, I shot a 58. Is that good? I don't know. Because they didn't have a par listed on the little sheet. But I shot a 58. And I felt good doing it. And I know I looked good doing it. So that, that's what I'm, I'm telling. Look, skies out, thighs out. That's, that's how I'm vibing with the bird dogs. That's what I've been doing this entire summer. I love it. And I had a great time. And again, I looked damn good. There, dummy thick. Go to go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or enter promo code locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler with every order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college or promo code locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler. And you won't want to take your bird dogs off. I, I, I promise you that. Thanks again for making Locked on Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Wyatt Langford went fourth overall in the MLB draft last night. 20 picks later, at 24 overall, Hurston Waldrop went to the Atlanta Braves. I hate it. Not because I hate Hurston Waldrop, but because, like I said, and like I've said before, I'm a Mets fan. Hurston Waldrop is now an Atlanta Brave. I'm not the type where I go, oh, You're on my professional rivals team, so I hate you. I hate it because Hurston Waldrop is going to become an incredible pitcher because he's a Brave and I'm a Mets fan. He's going to become an incredible pitcher, and he's going to make my life hell multiple times a season 
in just a few years when he's in the majors. That's why I hate it. Because he is going to ruin my day probably multiple times. I will also say that I just had to take my third cough break of the recording. <laughs> um, but I will say that, yes, Hurston Waldrop has that sick splitter that everyone loves. And I will also be honest and say, I never really, like even this season, I didn't really look at Hurston Waldrop as a first-round lock. More of like a, a possible first-round player. My issue is just, at times, he can be so inconsistent. There's also times where he just completely dominates. Like, no one can even argue that. However, there are times where it does not look like he's a first-round pitcher, okay? And I understand, like, inconsistency is my complaint with Hurston Waldrop. I understand Jack Caglione is probably going to be a very high pick next year. My issue with that also is the inconsistency that Jack Caglione brings to the table. Like it's like I understand Jack is going very early in the draft next year. However, if he does not become more consistent, I will probably hate it. And that, that was my issue with Hurston Waldrop was just, I did not think he was consistent enough for me to go, oh, he's going in the first round for sure. It was always, he's got enough stuff to maybe go in the first round, and he ended up going there. Also, you can call me whatever you want to call me because of this opinion, and it could be wrong. I've always said I'm not a, a baseball genius. However, if you don't have a a truly dominant pitch. If you don't have the Jacob deGrom fastball, the Mariano Rivera cutter, the Spencer Strider slider, if you don't have a dominant pitch, which I do not believe Hurston Waldrop has, then I think you need to have a more filled out repertoire. And for me, Hurston Waldrop's fastball goes fast, obviously, struggles with control on it. Hurston splitter, great, great break there, great change of pace. But again, I think he struggles with control on it a bit. It, like that, They're both good, but they're not overwhelming. And that's what you're looking for, is that overwhelming pitch. And Hurston Walter doesn't have that, so I think you need to have a more filled out repertoire. Like okay, Paul Skeens. Paul Skeens throws just like a fastball, a slider, and a changeup. Those are those are his almost only pitches that he throws. His fastball is overwhelming, and his slider is overwhelming. He can get away with it. Hurston Waldrop throws, what, a fastball, a splitter, and a slider? I have some hesitancy because it's a good fastball, it's a good splitter, and it's an all right slider. But he does not have a single overwhelmingly dominant trait or dominant pitch. And so for me, I'm like, okay, taking an inconsistent pitcher, relatively inconsistent pitcher, who does have two good pitches and one all right, but those are the only pitches he has. I think that's a fair call for some hesitancy as far as saying, first round pick granted the atlanta braves do a tremendous job developing pitchers so i have no doubt that he will be a very good pitcher i would imagine you know spring training if when he's by the more veteran players if he ever gets a chance with spencer strider i'd imagine he's gonna ask for tips on the slider there but i i just i do have hesitancy as to how long that's going to take him you know, is it going to take him two years? Is it going to take him four years to get there? And that's the thing with baseball also is that it can take that long and you could still have a long career and you could still work out fine. But first-round pick, I don't know if that's just my way of thinking, but that first-round pick, I want you in the bigs in in within three years probably. I don't know if Hurston Waldrop is going to do that. 
for the next segment of this show, we are going to be, or not even joined by, I am going to show you what Lindsey Crosby, who I love, locked on MLB prospects, uh, they were doing the MLB draft stream last night. And here's what they had to say about Wyatt Langford getting drafted fourth overall to the Texas Rangers. This number four pick from the Texas Rangers is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use promo code Locked in MLB. Uh, with the number four pick in the draft, the Texas Rangers have picked Wyatt Langford, the outfielder okay. out of Florida. And this Texas Rangers team is the only contender up here in the very top of this draft. Uh, it's something where, I mean, Wyatt Langford had a went nuclear in the College World Series, batted 375, three home runs, which is not easy in Omaha, had nine RBIs. And on the season, Wyatt Langford had some of the best power production of any Power 5 player. The question for me with Wyatt Langford is looking at the defense. We know the power is going to be plus to, I mean, to even higher than that. The good comparison here is George Springer as far as the talent. I mean, he obviously tons of power. How um, He's not the same size as Springer. Springer's just massive, but... He, like, he walks, he's a patient hitter, has, uh, has great, uh, great game power, but defensively is probably, I think, a tick below where Springer is. It's probably confined to a corner. We saw him have some trouble, some noteworthy trouble in Omaha in left field, although it is hard to play outfield in Omaha. Uh, but I watched him in center some this year, and it felt like he struggled in center and then could never really beat out whatever options were there for center field with Florida. Uh, Wyatt Langford going forward, is this an offensive, like a, a left field only or DH kind of profile? You know, I think you send him out there in the minors and give him every opportunity. Some people think that like he could be, you know, a center fielder. And, and I, I still see people who, and, and at points, you know, I'm like, maybe he can still be one. You know, what happens if he gets full reps there and gets a full year? Uh, I think you give him every opportunity because there's so much more value in that. But maybe that's why the Tigers didn't like him. Maybe they wanted the sure center fielder. It's not to say they didn't like it, but why they didn't draft him uh, as well as money. But I, I think you send him out there, and I think he's got enough arm for right. It may not be – I would feel okay with him out there. It's, he's not going to win any awards, but it, it's not like it's a below-average arm. It's kind of average. Uh, so, I, you know, one of the outfield spots will work. The bat's going to play. You could put him at first base, I think, and the bat would play. But – uh, you know, Texas made the right call here. I'm, I'm glad they didn't. What I saw was wrong that they did not uh, go another way. When a top talent falls, do you, you jump? Yeah, and everything we're going to see right now, for the most part, is going to be misleading and, and 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 stuff like that. You mentioned the money. I do want to discuss the money real quick because the slot value for the number four pick is seven point seven million dollars, and I'm I'm rounding here, obviously. But the Rangers don't actually have a ton of money. Their entire bonus pool is $9.9 .9 million because they lost a number, uh, a second round pick and a third round pick because they signed Jacob DeGrom and Nathan Eovaldi. And so this is something, they're going to need Wyatt Langford to take a below slot uh, pick simply so that they can have the hopes of getting a better option down, in, down on the board. Like they have to be cognizant of the money. You have to think that that m may have affected things a little bit there. Yeah, and I'm curious what the money cost will be because that was part of the the calculus when we thought he might go one uh, that uh, that he was going to be a big savings for for Pittsburgh relative to their nine point seven. Uh, so you know, I, I don't know how much of a saver he feels like he's probably going to be close to seven million in signing. Uh, that could have been one of those things too, where they're Texas probably didn't expect Langford there. Uh, you know, they probably called his agent, asked what the money mo money is, and we're adjusting. I bet they're adjusting draft plans right now as we speak. Uh, from you know, if Max Clark was the plan, because I bet Langford signs for more than Clark. That's uh, just a general feeling I would have right now. But yeah, it's it's nice to see things are getting wild early on uh, in a way that our, our top three were not the top three. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators. Actually, we'll be back in a few hours to talk Florida Gators football with a second episode today. For your second listen, check out Lockdown SEC. Hosted by Chris Gordy of Sports 790. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. 
Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports, Giants Country, NFL 33, and I'll see you all tomorrow.